Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, my name is Jason. I am a senior director here at Merkle. Um, today, we're going to be talking about building your upper funnel audiences through video. Um, so let's jump into it. Um, that's me. Hello. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about uh, one of our travel clients. And while I will be talking specifically about travel and our travel insurance client, I want to be clear here that this um, can really impact any client in any vertical, um, can be applicable to really anybody here. Um, as we all kind of are looking to build our full funnel integrated marketing plans. So we're going to start a couple of years ago, really back um, in March of 2020, when the world just stopped. What we saw almost overnight here um, in most of our advertising dollars, budgets, plans got thrown for a loop in mid-March 2020. Um, and travel specifically was significantly impact here. And our travel insurance client obviously was impacted as well. So over the last couple of years, we have seen advertising budgets start to rebound. The growth um, in late 2021 really helped you know, take off again. Um, we are seeing some improvements in overall budgets, but again, the real focus for the last few years has been capitalizing on the bottom of funnel traffic. Um, and unfortunately, that was the first thing that really happened when the world changed was we have to get more efficient. We have to pull back on ad spending. And where is typically the first spot that gets pulled? Upper funnel, um, our awareness media, our non-converting, non-directly attributable converting metric um, media dollars. Um, so what we're going to be talking about today are kind of ways um, to rebuild that funnel, to rebuild our audience strategy and bring this data back to our clients to say, maybe next time pulling back on our awareness media is, is not going to be the exact first choice we should make um, and something that we can, as advertisers, as marketers, use our data points and our testing and our pilots um, to really back up those statements. Um, as we all know, upper funnel is typically the very first thing, the, the lowest performing channel in terms of our final KPI are the first things to be really just gutted um, when budgets need to be pulled back on. And what we as marketers are trying to start to do is to say, yes, but, and, and I think that's a key phrase that we can start to change the conversations with our clients, with our companies with our, our partners um, to say, let's take a pause, let's take a step back and think of the long-term impacts of these um, decisions um, when they actually arise. Hopefully we don't have to go through a 2020 again, um, but what we're here to do today is to really show how to get back from that. So what we wanted to talk about here today really is, is using video specifically. Um, we worked with our travel insurance client to evaluate our current BAU efforts, um, which is our business as usual efforts, which was mainly our display prospecting, paid social prospecting, um, and paid search, uh, uh, paid search and uh, paid social and display remarketing. So there is very limited um, budget dollars going against our consideration set as our goals are focused on return on ad spend and our cost per policy goals. So mainly we sit in that very bottom bucket. Now, over the last year or so, our client has you know, watched our remarking efforts kind of start to dry up. And that is unfortunately one of the consequences when all the upper funnel and awareness media does get pulled back. Um, we do see our remarketing audiences start to dwindle. We all know tracking breaks a lot of the time now with things like iOS 14, um, cookie deprecation, uh, new laws that are coming into effect, remarketing will um, have some issues there. So trying to get ahead of all of that and re react again to the changes that have happened over the last few years, um, our client is now of the mindset that we need to start expanding and we need to start going back into that awareness funnel that we sat in prior to March of 2020. Um, we did a lot of efforts there back then, but haven't really been able to get back in there because of the um, hesitation to go back into media that is not aligning with the 
core KPIs of our programs, which are those return on ad spend and cost per policy goals. So having conversations over a few months with them, we came up with a few few different variations of the plan, but eventually settled um, on utilizing our funnel building efforts in that top section of awareness. So we we came to them with a plan to use uh, mainly YouTube video. And the main reason there is because of the uh, built-in awareness lift studies that they have. Um, Typically, most third-party partners will require hundreds of thousands of dollars um, to do those kind of lift studies and and evaluations. We didn't really have that much budget. So when we're trying to prove out this concept of going back into awareness, the client obviously had their hesitations and we have to have the attribution in place and measurement pieces. And I think that was a key component of why we chose YouTube to be our linchpin and our core uh, focus of this channel test was because they have that um, basically free of charge. You just have a you know a medium minimum to spend, um, but they have that available right in the platform in real time. And it's something that we could share on a week by week basis with the client. So we had to align with them that you know the goal of this campaign, the goal of this awareness function is not driving policy growth. It is not the direct attributable policy growth. We can look at that as a secondary KPI and we can look at it um, on a case-by-case basis in the geos that we were running and see if there is a lift. But generally, given the budget that we had, we did not expect that much impact on the bottom line. What our goal here was to do was drive awareness, lift, drive site traffic at an efficient rate. Um, And that really is the core KPIs that we looked at against also video completion rate and cost per video complete. So what we'll take you through next is a few key findings here that we discovered through our own internal reporting, plus, like I mentioned, YouTube's brand lift awareness, um, lift studies that they have available in either DV360 or Google Ads. We use DV360 for this. Um, What we came across first was YouTube video does drive significantly higher efficiency rates, both in engagement and cost than social. Um, We ran video on YouTube, we ran video on a few social platforms, and what we saw was generally a two times higher, two X higher video completion rate and an 89% lower cost per completed video view. One of the main reasons behind that lower cost per completed video view was that because of the targeting that we were able to do, we drove significantly lower CPMs um, than our social platforms. So that's one of the things that we wanted to focus on here is if our goals are to reach completely new audiences, um, completely new people, we want to do it at an efficient rate while also making sure that our efficiency stay on the fact that these videos you know, need to be watched past a few seconds, they need to be paid attention to, and they need to be completed at a relatively high efficiency rate. Um, they weren't very long videos, they were only 15, 15 and 30 seconds, um, but we had significantly higher video completion rates while running media on YouTube than we did on our paid social platforms. So something that we definitely wanted to keep in mind um, for our next phase. The second part um, that we saw coming out of that YouTube lift um, report was video that aligns to the actual content platform um, rather than in almost feeling like more of a commercial tends to perform better. So what we had here was two different variations of ad formats here. We had um, a travel influencer blog, a travel blogger that put together a couple of videos for us and we cut into 15 and 30 seconds and mashed them up and ran them against a animated short that the client had put together with the creative agency. And we ran them at the same time in the same markets. And what we saw coming out of the um, brand lift study was that the content that really aligned with YouTube's general formats of video engagement and video uh, content performed nearly two times stronger in terms of awareness lift than the animated shorts that the client had put together to utilize across both YouTube and paid social. Um, So what we found was that, again, aligning the content with the platform will drive a much higher response rate in terms of our lift. And we realized that people are paying attention, they are watching these videos. And if there is content that aligns with the content they're prepared to watch versus feeling the commercial, they are less likely to zone out. They are less likely to just skip it right away. Um, 
we did see higher skip rates on the animated videos as well. Um, and in, it comes back to what you people generally just use YouTube for, which is information gathering. So this pro the, the influencer blogger provides information in their video um, at a, in the same format that a typical YouTube video would be in. The animated short, it really just doesn't hit home on YouTube as much as a travel blogger. So we saw about a 31% relative lift on the travel blogger, and we only saw about a 15% relative lift on the animated video. So while overall YouTube drove um, a significant increase in lift when we ran this um, against our control audiences, we did see that aligning the content is a very, very key point that we wanted to take out when we were looking at replicating this with higher budgets and with longer run times. We only ran this for about eight weeks. So when we're looking at going to our evergreen positioning with the client for this year and hopefully in next year as well, we wanted to align with them on the fact that creative investment and creative content alignment with the platforms that we're running on is a key measure of success here that we have to continue to push on with them. And then lastly, what I'll touch on here is um, something that really is going to provide us our next avenue of success um, for their upper funnel efforts. The client really had never thought about using CTV, connected TV, mainly because the measurement piece. They would just say, this is just like running linear TV. There's no way to measure it. There's no way to measure the impact. There's no way to attribute policy growth to using connected TV in a market unless we're spending millions of dollars. And what we wanted to show here by, again, utilizing YouTube's built-in lift studies was that there is a way to measure it. And it's not going to take us millions of dollars to measure an impact. Um, and I think what we wanted to focus on here with them was, you know, it does have an impact. It's not something that we've typically used before, um, and is and is just something that has massive amounts of video inventory. And with the increase of streaming, the increase of cord cutters over the last few years, the increase of these platforms, there is a ton of inventory out there for us to capitalize on. Um, and what we saw, as you can see here on the graph, our overall lift was about 15%, which is good. But see, the connected TV lift was over 20, almost 25% versus our mobile lift, was, which was only about 6%. So we had a significant increase of connected TV inventory um, that grew our awareness bucket and grew our awareness uh, audience bucket at a significantly higher level and significantly higher efficiency in terms of a cost per lifted user than the mobile category. Um, so what this did for our client was it gave them the ammunition, the data points to go back to leadership and say, this is something that we haven't yet tapped into because we don't currently have any inventory running on CTV. We, as I mentioned, we just started with video during this test. And even historically before the pandemic, before budgets got pulled, we had not even explored the opportunity of CTV. And this gave us and the client and their teams the ammunition to say, there is an opportunity here. We have to go out and capitalize it on it because we can drive significantly higher volume of budget. We can drive a significantly higher uh, volume of awareness and media towards this channel where we haven't done so before. Um, so this really gave our clients the ammunition, like I said, to go back to leadership, to fight for that upper funnel budget, to say, this is impactful and this is why. So coming out of all of this, right? Every client out of a pilot says, what's next? Where do we go from here? And so what we focused on with them were three key areas for success. And one is continuing with this strategy. We saw through the brand lift studies, we saw through our you know, cost efficiencies on our backend reporting, we saw through the website data that, we, that was shared with us and, and worked on with the client, was that these people are not only watching the videos, but they are getting to the site and they are engaging at a higher percentage than our other BAU um, remarketing efforts. So when our clients come to us and say, we have to reduce budgets by 20%, what this really gives us is the ammunition to go back to them and say, maybe upper funnel isn't the right spot for us to just straight out cut from or cut all of our upper funnel media 
and audience growth opportunities to just focus on efficiencies. That will get us some wins in the short term. But what is it doing for our long-term success? And how is that impacting our overall business growth? And I think a lot of the times our clients come to us with only that six week, six month view, and they don't, they, we aren't doing a good job pushing back on them to say, let's think about this from a business opportunity and not just about hitting numbers for the next few weeks. So what we want to do coming out of this is continuing to utilize video assets, partnerships, and other opportunities within the video category. So we're not just talking about CTV, we're talking about paid social video, programmatic video, CTV, influencer strategies. We're really talking about growing the business through video. Um, and that starts with pilot programs like this one. This has really kicked off um, a continual conversation with incremental budgets on getting back our opera funnel campaigns and keeping our audiences growing. As I mentioned earlier, you know what we saw once we turned off our upper funnel marketing was that our marketing audiences bottomed out and then flatlined. Um, unless we are pushing on consideration and awareness parts of the funnel, those audience will, audiences will remain stagnant and will eventually bottom out. And that's something that we want to continue to avoid as the world turns again. So it's a big thing that we're working on with our clients there. Um, but getting through that is is just the first hurdle. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the biggest thing coming out of this whole test really was our CTV expansion opportunity. We did see that it grew our awareness buckets significantly higher than our other device channels and something that, that our clients have not typically looked at um, as an opportunity because the measurement pieces in their eyes just wasn't there. Um, they had some misconceptions and thankfully through this pilot, we were able to combat that bias and get them the answers that they needed. One of the things that we wanted to look at with them coming out of this again is not only using our CTV inventory, our partners to measure those pieces, but also start to think about how we can utilize CTV in our full funnel expansion. So utilizing CTV, not just as an awareness tactic, but also more in the consideration and then working with partners to not only build on that um, expansion, but also capitalize on the expansion and retarget to those users, keep them in the funnel and push, continue to push them farther and farther down. Um, that is a huge piece that we're working on with them this year. Um, and we're really, really, really excited to get to kind of think through the science and think through those measurement pieces with them. Um, and then lastly, really, what we want to come down to um, is creative development and testing. It's It's something that tends to fall off the last piece, that testing piece. Um, a lot of our clients get a piece of creative out there, it does well, and then they don't have a next step. So not only did we see, again, that aligning our creative with the platforms and, and trying to be a little bit more native to the platforms, especially on YouTube, um, and how people engage with that platform goes a long way. So we will have to think in terms of not only developing the actual assets, but the strategy and the execution of them but then being iterative in those next phases. That tends to be that point of stopping where a client will get the piece out, the video out, and then let it sit. And we don't actually end up you know, making new versions, cutting it in different ways. And that's something that we're working on them with is getting that piece of content out there, but then you know, working with them on different iterations, different concepts, um, and pushing them to continue to test and rotate in new assets and new creative on a regular basis. Um, this is going to be big for them in 2023. And something that, again, we're really excited to partner with them on. So that really wraps it up for us here in this session. Um, I want to say thank you again for, for coming to hang out with us for a few minutes. Um, I hope that this provides you and your teams with some more data points and some more ammunition to go back to your clients to fight for those upper funnel media dollars um, and gives you those opportunities to do what we did here, uh, which was prove some people wrong and uh, get some uh, fighting dollars back. But thank you again, and uh, we'll see you soon.